the more apples you have on the tree, the better, the get better cross pollination you get. Bind this together and that's it. That'll grow, just like that. Almond, this is a plum. Most people put them on a stake and they have a root ball that big. I have a root ball that big. Three months, I had flowers. Six months, I got fruit. And I'm not telling a lie, you can see it yourself. Today, as you may hear from the sound on the roof, we're finally enjoying some long awaited rain. It's been dry for quite a number of weeks across the end of summer and beginning of autumn. And now we're finally getting some autumn rain and uh, the plants are loving it. Today, I have a really special video for you. A few weeks ago, I met a gentleman with a lot of gardening knowledge and some interesting techniques. And about a week ago, I visited his garden. I brought the camera along so you could come too and went for a tour. So without any further ado, I'll hand you over to Charlie. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. The more apples you have on the tree, the better, the better cross pollination you get. Because some apple trees, like the Coctus orange pippin, you get a good crop one year, the next three years you get nothing. So you have all the other apples on there. And you're never short of an apple. And then the good thing about it is if you have an apple tree of one variety, they all ripen at once and you can't eat them. We've got Lady in the Snow in there, which is a very early apple, uh, to a very late apple. I think some of these ones here are very, very late apples. So you can go from early spring right through to almost winter. In fact, there's one there that'll hang on I can't think of the name at the moment, that when the apples come out and flower, it's still got apples hanging on it. It's that late. So that's why you have a lot of apples. And grafting is dead simple. Look, I'll show you. My shed knife, my grafting knife. But why do I have this one? Is because of this thing here. When I do a bark graft, I can lift the bark off with this. It's much easier than a tiny thing like that. As you see, this one is sharpened on both sides. The grafting knife is only sharpened on one side. It's flat here, and this is a right handle grafting knife. If you know a person that's got a really good apple and you like it, you've got to cut these off and throw them away. Well, that's what you graft on. You graft on these. They're good, you just graft them on. It's dead simple to graft. The only thing is, when you start, get a knife glove. I did, when I started, I did Four grafts and cut myself five times and I'm bleeding like a stuck pig. And that's what happens, you get a knife, but after a while, you've got to concentrate and you've got to keep your eye on what you're doing. Dead simple. The easiest to graft are your plums, second easiest is apples. The hardest is walnuts. They bleed like a stuck pig. And it's very hard, you've got to stop that sap from going. See this here? Now, that's the centre. This is, this little bit here, that's the hard wood. And now they got, the graft has to, uh, the sap runs up just what we said, a little line. That's what the gra uh, sap runs on. Yep. And it's a sap which you've got to um, get to the other plant. Now I'll do another one on here. What you do is you take your leaves off. You measure him up. Yep, it'll go. Let's get a straight piece here. Okay, this one, you go in the centre. You've got to watch what you're doing and you just give him a wriggle. Straight down the centre. Like that. And then this one, you've got to go from the centre to the heel. You've got to keep looking because you don't want to slip off and cut your finger off, which I've done many times. And being an ex year, I swell, swear really well. Okay, now you've got to slide this one, just hold that back. That one back there. And this is called a whip and tongue graft. You see? There it is there. You see he snapped in there, is this one's up here. And you bind this together, and that's it. That'll grow, just like that. You've got to bind it up, 
and you've got to keep the air out of it and this will start, it'll have fresh shoots on there. But you do that um, in very early spring. When the UVs are really low, at the moment they're about seven. But that there's, that there's a graft. There's an almond there. And these are all plums. This is a plum. They get so heavy, I've got to put string on them to hold the branches up. Otherwise, they get so heavy, they snap so the branches. What type of plums are they? Well, this one here is, uh, is a cold golden drop. And just the other ones are just plums I've liked. And I've been around to people's places and I say, oh, do you mind if I come back and get a, a couple of those, they call them sirens, but a couple of uh, cuttings off you. And they're all growing on an almond tree. See this one down here? You can actually see the graft in there. You can see the graft in here. I'll get you a bit of graft. Here, look at this one. This one's really taken off. There it is there. See how's, how they swell? This here is almond. This here is a plum. You can see the pink ladies on there. But if you have a look at one of these apples, that's definitely not a pink lady. That's a French apple. Now, I'm, I can't speak French, but I think it goes grant the expression. We don't usually pick the apples. We wait till they drop. If they've got a hole in the side, there's calves over there and sheep down there, and that's who eats them. So we try and keep it clean so we don't get any bugs. Um, around here, you'll see some little crab apples down in here. If it's a pink flowering uh, apple you got here, you put a pink flowering crab apple, and that'll cross. That'll do the cross pollination, and hence you get a good crop of apples. Some apples need up to six other trees to cross pollinate. Otherwise, you don't get many apples. But if you use crab apples, that's where they all come from. It's best around the other side, actually, because the sun comes in that side. You got these long fellows. They always produce well. But the only thing is it's got to be cut right back every couple of years. You can start to see them now. Start to look up. And the good thing about it, not many, not, not many bugs or whatever will touch them. Uh, the possums don't, not, not. Birds, not. Yeah. You can see they literally hang down. They're like grapes. And the other thing is, when, when, you, when they're flowering, you gotta go around with blue and white masking tape. Blue is for boys, and white is for girls. That's the same color as washing machines and you, fridges. You couldn't and, find any pink masking tape? No, I couldn't find any pink ones. <laughs> but you know, and, and dishwashers are all white, but blue is for boys, as you can see. And you gotta have a boy, you can have one boy to 12 girls, isn't he lucky? And of course, all this will take me over a week to prune. And you know how I do most of the pruning here? I walk along with a brush cutter. Not even a steel chainsaw will kill this. I put horse manure on there, and you can come out and you can see volcanoes coming up through it. It's that hot, but doesn't worry them. They're a beautiful rose, dead simple because I've got to cut this right back, and all it gets thrown away, or you can. You can graft them. You can see that? There's white in, in the rows. Now you can get a standard rose. There's one down there. You can see the tall part come up. That's a wild rose, just like this. And you wait till they get a high, then I just do a whip and tongue on it on, and take the graft from any one of these and put on that rose there. And here, the tomato plants. Uh, down the bottom of here, now this one, the bugs have got into it. I'm not worried because I feed them the chooks. Uh, okay, down here, there is a little hole in the bottom of here. Uh, believe me, there's a hole down there, which, there it is. And that's it. That little hole there is what this is growing out of. Put the stake in, there's enough room to put your tomato in. That's all you need. And you can see that there is still very wet 
and they haven't watered that for three days. Now that is a metre deep, that hole. It's only about that big. I've got one of those um, handheld post hole diggers. And I fill it up with a compost, a lot, put two handfuls of lime, trace elements and everything else goes in there. And that's in the winter time, so it all rots down. And that's the only bit you weed, is that little piece down there. And when you water, you never, ever water your tomato plant. That's the world's worst thing. You water it so the water just fits down there and gradually so. If I left this for a fortnight, these tomatoes would be still alive at 40 degree heat because the roots go down there. Most people put them on a stake and they have a root ball that big. I have a root ball that big because I buried my tomato down there. And so it all shoots from the side and the roots go down. The roots chase the water. The trees chase the water. If you don't believe me, plant a weeping willow within a hundred yards of a septic tank. It'll find it. It's the same with these. This is just one plant. When, when, you, when you get these side shoots, see these pieces come out here? Well, if this was standing up, this is what, and I tie onto the stake, not onto the tomato plant, and just wind the string. And the string, everything comes off a farm. The string is baling twine, baling line. And that's all I use. So the laterals, you haven't taken the laterals off your main stem? No, no they're, they're all laterals that come out. But you keep the laterals mm. coming off your branches? You only take the laterals off on, on these things here. Yep. The ones you, the ones you use spallier on. Yep. It's better on this one up here. As you can see, this one here has come from there all the way up. Um, where's this one? That one's from that, that tree. Yeah, and that's going to go, but you take out the laterals on here, but not on your tomato plant that's coming up and down, because they're the ones you tie onto here, and you, you wait till they're about a foot long, and then you just wind it around and tie it up. Now, the wind has got plenty of room to go through. It can blow a gale, and these will just swing in the breeze, and they don't get damaged. There's no crowding. A lot of people bring them up the centre. Overcrowding, you get mildew and everything else you get in there. As you can see, the centre's quite clear. Your tomatoes go out everywhere. Look at this one. It goes from back there, all the way here, all the way up to there. And yet there's a... In this spot. Yeah. It's going right across and across over here. All the way down there. Right. So it's crossing the other plant and Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Now you have a tomato, look at this, this is about six inches, six inches, six inches, six inches, six inches. There's a hand of tomatoes every six inches. Now this is the end of the season, everything's gone, I just let it go to, because all this is going to get pulled up, and I throw it on the heap and the sheep eat it. This one here was, these are these black Russians, didn't do any good, so I just let it go. These are the round marbly type, but not as good as that one back down there. But I, I took the seeds from that one and they'll be planted in here. Take your tomatoes in a different spot. And the best thing about it is, I only have to shift these a little bit. The roots are down that hole. All this is what you call uh, solar, solar whatever, you know, killed all the bugs. So you don't have to move the base very far. No, you don't, yeah. no, no. But you do this in the middle of winter. And you would see I take a lot of star pickets. And I've got a few over there still. If it's black, I've, I've had to purchase them. But if it's rusty, people throw them out down the tip. So I just put it in the crook of the tree, go, uh, uh, uh. And I'm over 80 and I can do it. But that's what, you've got holes already drilled in them. So you just pick a hole and go for it. Now, on this ground here, how do you control your weeds? This is what I, I seen this when I was 15. It's just a bit of stainless steel bar, but actual would be better if it was turned the other way if this thing here was on the other side. But it still works. And what you do is you're using the sun and the ultraviolets to kill your weeds. And I don't pick the weeds up. You see, everything just lays in the ground. 
let the, the ultraviolets do the work. You come back tomorrow and you'll find they're all dead. Well, if I do it in the morning and the afternoon, they'll be all dead. But that's all it is. Now, I made this myself. I got an old welder down there. There's a bit of pipe, rod, and a bar. When I'm watering, see I'm standing up, and that's what I do. I put this on the base of your, of your pumpkins and kerbits. These three here were Minnesota midgets. They're finished. These ones all here were zucchinis, which we feed to the what chooks. Have you got on the end of that one? Oh yes, it's a, a sprinkler thing. Yeah. And you've used a riser. Yeah. These are not bad because I can undo them because you do get stones in that to block it. Yep. There, a bit of dirt in there now. And the reason I like this is I don't have to bend down. And of course, all this you get from any plumbing place. And even when I do just here, I just water here, and I shift it to here, and I shift it to here, and the water goes the same thing as tomatoes. There's a big hole down there, and, you and the seeds are in there. And now this black stuff heats the ground up between 5 and 15 degrees more than what it is if it's left out in the sunshine. So the black absorbs the heat that, that goes to the plant. So you can grow pumpkins here. This is a pumpkin here. There's about three varieties in here. There's Kent. There's that one there. But it's, oh, there was another one. And right in here, as you can see the black plastic. There's that hole in there. Well, I, I can reach right in there and just put a bit of water in there. It all goes down that hole. Then we're on tanks. And I run this whole garden, plus that, plus the paddocks, on one tank. So you, got, you, got to, you can't waste water. You've got to use water twice if you can. And the reason why I use the weed stop is that it saves me weeding. And because you've got a hole there, that's all your water is that hole. Now, when I was in, we went to down the Rhine, and what they do is they make sauerkraut, but they make the best stuff out of this. So they want the leaf, they just cut out the centre, and you can lay five or six of them on top, and then you can cut them very fine. And their sauerkraut is so beautifully done when it's bottled. And so what is this? What do you this is called walking, walking stick cabbage. As you can see, they are definitely walking sticks in there. See the stalks? Yeah, you wouldn't want to be bashed in the back of the head with one of them. Look at this. There's one there. Never been watered. And the chooks will devour it. And also, you see the way it comes back that way. Because the horses walk past here and browse on it. <laughs> but you just snap it off. And you just feed it to the chooks. Do you eat any yourself? Oh yeah, yeah, you can eat it. Tastes like, mmm. It's like a very crunchy silver, but it is, it's nice. It is nice. But then I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fisherman, I lie. Good. Isn't it? Very good, yeah. They just eat it. Chook food. Now they, they need the the green what's in the leaf. It makes an, the more they eat of the green stuff as the yellow the eggs and also the bugs they eat. Hence they let them roam free. And we don't have chooks really, we have wombats. As you can tell by the, the holes in the straw and that, and also around, the holes everywhere. That's, that's bales of hay, just put there, that's actually three layers of hay. And what we do, is like, it's like a, a sponge cake, you put layers, you put, first off you put chook manure, then you put your bales of hay down, and chook manure and your bale of hay, and chook manure and your bale of hay. And the chook manure, what we do is, Lynn, my wife gets in there, this is a good thing, for all farmers, you get your wife in there, and she's got to rake it up, into a pile, and she shovels it and puts it in a heap. 
You see the chook meter? And then she shovel, I have a, a sieve around there and I shake it back and forth and all the sawdust falls through but the chook manure is uh, saved and that's what goes on the plant. It's all dry. Now that goes straight on the top and I'll put it out there on Sunday night because Monday they're expecting a shower or two and that'll all go on the top of here and that rots through. Plus I'm putting the, the, the moisture in there from the drums, the 44 gallon drums which have uh, trace elements and uh, seaweed solution. There is trace elements, there's iron, chelate, there's uh, uh, what's it? manganese not, manganese and zinc, um, boron and the trace elements. And they put on, and they come through the liquid into that thing there, which goes into here. And there it is there. Very simple, and the water goes down there, so this goes in, in and waters all this. And these trees will find the water. No worries about it, they, if there's water there, they'll find it. Now you can't have it up high, because almost the same height to the drums. So it's got to be lower than the bottom of the drum, so the lot goes in here. Bottle brushes, bottle brushes between them. And what happens is, they both flower at the same time as the avocados and the bottle brushes. Hence, you see them up here, they need a good cutback. Bottle brushes are good. You can cut the hell out of them and they still grow. Whereas other plants, you touch them, they just die. But these, I can prune these back many times. I've tied them up and done all sorts of things to them. They flower around the same time? They flower exactly the same time. That's very early and they go right through they are still flowering up there. They're giving off. Here, look, there's one up there flowering. There's one up there. But the, the main time is early spring, right through to almost last summer, before they're finished. And because the, about, the bee has to go from here to here, he's got to fly past or through the uh, avocados. But this, you've got to do this, if you're in a paddock or anything, you've got to protect them. And it's just old bags. And this is just wire. And what I'll do is, this one's about oh, three years old. Took a while to get going, but then when it comes out the top. But then I'll graft onto this. So the trees behind you, the avocado behind you, how old is it? This one here is a... Uh, Oh, all up, this would be almost nine years old, but it had a, a terrible shock. It was almost as tall as that one behind this blackwood. And the possums got in and ate everything. They ate the leaves, they ate the roots, the, they, mean, they ate the branches, they ate the everything, right down till it's only that high off the ground, as you've seen when we go in there. And so all this has just come out. And what that does, it shocks the tree. And last year, no, the year before, last year and this year, it has started the fruit. But it's going to fruit this year. I'll get one that I haven't pinched the end off. Because it's got these little things coming out the side. You see these things here? These ones here? Well, that's, that's fruiting nodes. See them here? They'll all fruit from there. And the higher you get, the more prevalent they are. And the biggest enemy of avocados, because avocados come from South America, we don't have what they got down there, possums. You must have a possum trap set 24 seven. You can see I've had a rat in here, there, and hung out and ate the apple. But I'll get him, um, because what'll happen is, he'll step on that lever, and that's what happens. Yeah, what are these? Okay, now what you do here is you cut a groove in, in here about, you do this in the summertime, about quarter inch to half an inch wide and you take it right down to the skin, right down to, to, to the wood. So you take the, all the bark off? You take a little strip of bark off about that wide right. and that shocks the tree and the tree says I'm going to die because I'm getting no new um, sap coming through. So I'm going to die. So I'm going to put out 
flowers and I'm going to put out fruit. And what happens is the, the graft eventually fills in and but it still still will fruit next year. But the year after that, it won't fruit as many. Because avocados only fruit every, every, every second year. You get some fruit, but not as many as you did when they fruited. And now, is this avocado grafted? No, it's seedling. This is seedling. I was in a garden club and I asked the people there, anybody got avocado? Oh, I've got avocados. They're coming up in my compost pen. That's one of them. Right. So it's nine years, you say, approximately? Yeah, it's very old, this one. But you can see, see what it's doing. Now, avocados, you've got to have an A and a B. And by that, I mean, of course, they're, they're a funny thing. Um, the avocado, in the morning, the A is a female and the B is a male. Then they go about sleep by lunchtime. Being South American, they like to have a, a siesta. Then they wake up about two o'clock and the A is now a male and the bee is now a female. And, but it's the bee that does the pollination and you've got to have the A and the bee, otherwise it's like two girls or two boys and nothing happens. Now the chooks get up there and scratch all that. Oh, here's the main thing too. While I'm here, I'll show you this. We have to get down. Avocados, when they get older, the roots come near the surface. This, is, this avocado is about Oh, a good two foot below this drum when I planted and we just filled it up. And this grows up here. This is pretty solid now. And uh, the, the avocados don't like their roots disturbed. Now we've got chooks or actually half-bred wombats. And so to keep the chooks from digging, you put chook wire just down that. You just pin it down. Here it is here. There it is there, chook wire. First off you can put your compost down, then you put your plant your drum. Now you've got to have the, the chook wire right up here and sometimes you put a couple of rocks in here because the chooks will get in these things and make a nest. They think it's yummy, well anybody does. But you can see the distance. This is very old uh, straw here. You put your hand in, you can almost feel the dirt inside there. And they, what they're chasing is, because I layer this with uh, chook whoop and straw, as soon as it rains, the worms get stuck into that. And chooks love worms. <laughs> yeah, and they'll empty it. We have worms here that long. They're not the longest worms I've seen. I have seen the best soil in Australia. And they have worms as thick as your thumb and over a yard long. And a place called Merry Winebone which is up near the Pilligus, just past the Pilligus Scrub, up near Come By Chance, and it's in the Moree floodplains and a self mulching pug. And it is so rich that the, the foxes follow you down the furrows and eat the worms. I kid you not. These avocados like high nitrogen fertiliser, and Chook Whoop's got it. So they're getting fertilised. Every day, all day. Every day, but I also go around and pick it all up too. If I see a, if I see big lumps of it on the ground, I don't leave it there. I go around. I got a um, a, a scraper which is like a, a, to pick up dog doodos, and I pick them up and I put it in a bucket. And because it's going to rain or get a shower on Monday, it'll go on top of this on Sunday night, and all that'll get soaked. But the chooks will scratch it everywhere, which is they're doing good because they're breaking it up and it'll all go down here. You watch, if you come back in the springtime, you'll find this all rotted down to about here. It'll just go zoof, like that. But the soil underneath is so rich. And these trees, trees are not dumb. They'll send the roots in underneath there and get all that. Now, you've got to have plenty of moisture when you have avocados, otherwise they'll kick the bucket easy. But plenty, put plenty of compost around them and you can, they can last long. We're on tanks, and the tank's only got about a metre and a bit in. But I've still got to keep all these going, the paddock going, the sheep, and also the garden. But you've got to do stuff so as to make your water last longer. Okay, this is a seedling. Now I threw two se three seeds in here. This one's a bee. Uh, no, this is an A, this is a B, 
and this is whatever. And you can see that because they're in a restricted area, they've all grafted themselves onto one another. See down here? They've just become one. So the sap's doing a lot of work down there. Now, okay, I've done these ones. See, I've cut around here. And this, that was to shock this tree here. And what happens is that. Now the white stuff, that is sugar coming out of the sap. The tree is still pumping out a lot of moisture and that's sugar. Okay, now grafting, there's a graft there. There's a graft there. There's a graft there. There's a graft there. Uh, a wedge grafter, there's a graft here. One here, all the way through there's grafts. Even this one over here, you can see a big lump. That's a graft. And these, now all you do is in town, I've been around to a lot of places. If I'm driving past and you can tell a leaf of a avocado, it's easier to tell in the springtime because they're in flower. But then you've got to write it down or you've got to have a memory like an elephant. And you come back and, and in the early winter, I mean late winter, early spring, you ask for some cuttings. Now, this one here, you see this part here? This is what I take. And I, I cut this into this section. And over this one here, I do a graft off him. Here, this one here, this is a good one. See, there's the, the head. See, and it's going to start flowering. And then I, I do a wedge graft from there in, in. But you can only do that in late winter, early spring. And you have to watch the, the Bureau of Meteorology website. And you've got to look up the UVs. At the moment, they're six to seven. But in the winter, they go down to one to one or zero. What you've got to do is do your grafting when the UVs are between zero and two, which is only about three weeks, because they just shoot up. Because we're in southern Tasmania and there's nothing up there in the ionosphere. Now, is that only avocados you're talking about in that? Oh, you, no, ap apples, apples, uh, plums and all that, you can go later. Right. Or yeah, apples, you can do them in the winter time. Yep. Okay. Now these, these are fussy, because yep. they don't come from this, um, continent. They come from South America. Okay, and then you graft these on and yeah, you get you get avocados. But if you if you do it that way, I'll show you back here, in three months I had flowers and six months I had fruit. Usually all these other ones, which I didn't know about, these are all grafted a very uh, like spring and into, into summer. And of course it'll take up to four years to get your fruit, but it's still cheaper than buying them. You buy an avocado, you can get a double double grafts of one, and it'll cost you near a hundred dollars. These have got dozens of grafts on them. And that makes it better for when you have fruit. Oh, the bee has wonderful time. I did these ones a bit different last year, and I thought I'd try something different. Here's a graft here, but I've got other grafts which I have done and this one here, here's a graft here. I've done this late spring, early summer. Nothing on this for until about, uh, oh, I'd say next year we should have fruit. But these ones here, I did a little bit different. Three months I had flowers, six months I got fruit. And I'm not telling a lie, you can see it yourself. You can see the graft here. You can see the parafilm still on the branches here and you can see the graft is swollen and this comes over here and just a little bit different way but you're going to have to wait till next spring for me to show you how it's done because that's when I'll get the sirens which is this piece here. See, this, this, this is going to fruit next year, this one. See, see all the stuff in here? And that's what I, I'd, I'd pinch out the top and I'd just graft this piece here on. And as you can see, they're not bad size already. This is a, a bacon, and this is a third year flowering. And I, this is a grafted avocado. This is a grafted avocado, and the next one's a grafted avocado. 
and this is a bacon, and that's a, um, a hash. Of course, I thought I'd try them, but these still took about four years before, uh, before they started fruiting. They fruit very small, one or two, three here, there and everywhere. Then they, as, as the years, and then all of a sudden they just go, burr. Now, there's a lady in town, she has shepherds that size. Now there's a bloke not far away, he has gem that size. You can graft them on your tree, they will grow. If you look after them, they will grow that size. But you just got to be patient. Don't expect like tomato plants, you're going to plant them and get tomatoes the same year. You're not going to do it, or apple trees. Yeah, I've got to help the bees, because the bees help me. Without bees, you're not going to get any avocados. No bees, no avocados. Simple as. So you've got to have something to bring the bees in. Leatherwood, but for every bee you see in the leatherwood, you'll see 50 in, in, in your bottle brushes. Bottle brushes do a better job bringing the bees in. I like to get little drums. I dig a hole down there and that I can lay on the ground. I cannot touch the bottom. There's a hole that deep. And I do that in now to, to middle winter. And I dig it down and I can't touch the bottom. I fill it with compost because it rots. And I put trace elements with it. Now I put this around it. Okay, the hole is what size? Is it this drum or that hole? Oh, this one. That one, this one here. Yeah, this is a hole that you that you dig and you just tap it in. Now the paddock ones, they're 44 gallon drums. These are 12 gallon drums. But I've had to split these up because I also use them in my chook shed. Now you just put a bit of paint around, which you get from the tip, an old brush, paint it on, plenty of layers, and that's what you plant your what's I mean. But when you plant your seed in it, you got to uh, keep adding soil in it. And it'll, it'll come up. Then you put a mesh around it and clip in chook, uh, chook bags. And that's to keep the cold air off it as well as the frost. And right across the top, you put a, a, a plea or opaque bit of plastic, which you can pick up mitre 10, a bit of sticky tape around it. That's it. You only have to last a little while. There's the graft. This was seedling. Now, from here down, it's six years old. From here up, can be ending up to 20 years old. And that's the bit that you've got to keep going and that's the bit that flowers and produces. Looking at this, this might fruit this year. You can see the fruit in there, there's his bud. There's little buds in there. You see them just here. So this could have fruit on next year. Now this one here is a bit taller. Now, some of them go that way and some of them go that way. A gem and when that, they go that way, where it has to go that way. And here is the wedge graft in here. There's a wedge in there. You can actually see the wedge here. You can see the wedge down here. See the two different colours? And that's just a wedge graft. Dead simple, easy. You can see the fruit there. Grafts on there, yeah. You see that, that there's parafilm. And this was done last year. Then what they got? Three, four, five, six, seven. Already. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a failure. That's a failure. There's normal. When they flower, there's millions and millions and millions of flowers. And if a, you get one on every 200, 300, that'll set fruit. But that's what it's like. It's grafted here, and it's it's parafilmed right to the end. But this one didn't take. And what happens is, there's two lots of, I'm only showing you half the graft here. Why they don't, well they fail, a lot of places. You see here's the grafting tape. It's actually transparent. And the ultraviolets will kill it. So they kill the little graft in between here. I'll just keep unwinding this. And that there, there's the groove, and we, there it is there. It didn't take, this fits in there. You can see, see the, the V, the V shape, and you bring it to the centre, and that's where that, uh, the, what's name runs up, the sap runs up here.
but it just didn't take. That's no worries. Even if you get one and six, they still cost you nothing. But it needs more water. Now this one's taken. I've got a graft on here and I've got a graft on here. You can see this. And yeah, that's that's a protected. Then I'll put a bag over the top of that again. That's it. Simple as. My outlook is I'm only on this earth for a short time. I'm almost 80. So 90% of the people that reach 80 don't reach 90. Now, even younger people are only on this earth for a short time. If you have a place, you must leave it in better condition than when you got it. And my idea is if I put this stuff out and do it, and it, it's adding value to the place. Because the next person that buys this is not going to be a share farmer or someone like that. It's going to be one that's interested in gardening and all that, and he will carry on. He might cut down a few trees and plants, different stuff, but most of it's there.